Okay, we're going to talk about changing fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. That's what 4.7. So fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. Okay, so first, fractions to decimals. Okay, when we talk about fractions to decimal, we have two types of answers. Terminating decimals and repeating repeating decimals okay terminating and repeating terminating decimals are decimals with zero remainders Repeating decimal numbers are decimals with repeating remainders. So let's look at an example of each one. Um, let's see here. Seven and nine over twenty. Okay. To change a fraction to a decimal, the seven we just bring down into our answer. Okay, so it's going to be seven point something. Then we take this and divide twenty into nine. Okay, well twenty doesn't go into nine. Twenty goes into ninety how many times? four times, which would be 80, remainder 10, bring down my zero. 20 goes into 100 how many times? Five times. Be 100, remainder zero. So there's my zero remainder, okay? So I take 0.45 and I put it right over here. So my answer is 7.45. That is a terminating decimal number. Yeah. So when you divide it up there, um, would, you, would you be adding it to it? Or? No, you're just placing it alongside the number. You're not adding anything. You're just placing it behind the 7 with the decimal. Thank you. Isaiah? I just added them because it doesn't change the number. Remember, any number, if I have the number 9.000000, that is the same thing as 9. I just added two zeros because I knew 20 didn't go into 9. And so I knew I was going to have to add zeros to it to try to get it to terminate or, or to repeat. Huh? Twenty into ninety or twenty into nine divided twenty into nine right there. Twenty goes into nine four times, be eighty, main or ten, bring down a zero. I divided twenty into nine. I divided the bottom number, the denominator, into the top number, the numerator. Now let's look at the repeating numbers. Let's say I had the fraction seven over twelve. Okay? There's no whole number to bring down, so I just simply take 12 divided into 7. Now, once again, I just put point zero zero because it doesn't change the number, and I know that 12 doesn't go into 7, so I know I'm going to have to have zeros. So 12 doesn't go into 7. 12 goes into 70 five times, be 60, remainder 10, bring down a zero, 
12 goes into 100 eight times, be 96, remainder 4, bring down the next zero. 12 into 40 goes three times, be 36, remainder 4, add a zero and bring it down. So it's just going to keep doing that right there. So in other words, it keeps repeating the remainder of 4. So the answer to this problem then is point five eight three with the bar over the three because that tell that bar tells me what number repeats and that is a repeating decimal. Brandon? No, you never divide the bot the top number by into the bottom number. We don't ever do that. You always divide it's always bottom number into top number. Bottom number on the outside of the bracket, top number on the inside of the bracket. So we're not no, it's not really not anything like we did last night. As far as comparing them. The improper fractions yeah, similar, because we were dividing like 22 over 5. We divided 5 into 22. So, yeah, it's similar. Yes, Wall? How do we know where you brought into that repeat number? When it's just like the remainder keeps going and going and going. Well, when the digits start remit, I mean, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. I mean, you just carry it out till the digits start repeating. If they don't repeat, then you keep going until they do or until it ends up with a zero remainder. One of two things is going to happen. You're either going to come up with a remainder or digit that keeps repeating, or you're going to end up with zero as a remainder. And so you go until those one of those two things happen. Lily? Brandon? Do what? About half and half. Okay, if if you don't stop, then you'll be doing that for the rest of your life. Because it's going to repeat and 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 repeat. You see, you'd have to do that your whole life. When you figure out which number repeats, then put a bar over it, just like I did, just like the example I did. What I say about, let me see your head again. Now, let's look at another one. Seven and seven eighths. Seven and seven eighths. The seven just comes down into our eventual answer here. And so the decimal will be right there. And then I take this part and change it to a decimal which means I'm going to divide 8 into 7. Okay, so I don't confuse anybody. 8 doesn't go into 7, so I have to put a 0. Put a decimal and add a 0. 8 goes into 70, 8 times, be 64, remainder 6. I'm going to add another 0 and bring it down. 8 into 60 goes 7 times, be 56, Remainder 4, add another 0 and bring it down. 8 into 40 goes 5 times, be 40, remainder 0. So here is the decimal part of my answer that I need to take over here. So that gives me 
point eight seven five. So my answer is seven point eight seven five. None of the digits repeat. So therefore now the seven repeats, but it doesn't repeat in the same order. And then it would be a repeating and you would have to put put a totally different answer. Huh? This is the answer, the thing that I circled. This is the work to show me the answer. Trinity? No. No. It, in other words, that number right there, if I had 22 and 7 eighths, then that's going to be 22.875. If I had 212 and 7 eighths, that's 212.875. The 7 eighths is always going to go give you that decimal, 0.875. doesn't matter what's in front of it. What's in front of it goes in front of the decimal. Okay, let's look at a repeating decimal. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find a specific type of one that I've done before. All right, let's look at this one. One over six. One over six means I take and I divide six into one. Once again, I've just added zeros because I know I'm going to have to because six doesn't go into one. Six goes into one zero times. Okay, six goes into ten one time, be six, remainder four. Bring down a zero. Six goes into forty, six times, be thirty six, remainder four, bring down a zero. Six into forty goes six times, be thirty six, remainder four. Bring down a zero. So what repeats? The six. When's the first time that it starts repeating? After the one, right? So my answer is point one with a six and a bar over the six. You don't do this. That's not correct. Okay, I want you to do this one, this one on your own. Five over eighteen. I want you to do that one on your own. Trinity, a line over the six, not a line over the top. Nothing because there was not a whole number in front of the fraction. There has to be a whole number in front of the fraction for there to be a number in front of the decimal. Hey, if you're working on it, keep working on it. So basically, I divide 18 into 5. 18 doesn't go into 5, so I put a 0. I add a decimal to the 5, and then I add two zeros to it. Now, 18 goes into 50 two times. That would be 36. 
remainder four. Bring down the next zero. 18 into 40 goes, hang on, that's wrong. Yeah, it should be 14, and that's 140. Eighteen goes into one forty seven times. Be one twenty six. That would be a remainder of fourteen. Add a zero, bring it down. So it keeps doing that right there. Two point two seven 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 and it would go on forever. Okay, so my answer then is point two seven with the bar over the seven. One and five over eighteen, then it would be one point two seven with the bar over the seven. Okay, now let's look at changing decimals to fractions. This is easier, providing you remember your place values. For example. 0 0.8. Now let's remember, review our place values. If the decimal's here, then you have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay, so this has one place value. So therefore, that is 8 over 10. The tenths place value is 1 tenth, 1 over 100 for the hundredths place value, 1 over 1,000 for the thousandths place value. Now, can I reduce 8 over 10? What is the common factor between 8 over 10? What is common between 8 and 10? What? Two. two. So I divide the top by two and the bottom by two. And that gives me four over five. Four fifths. And that is your answer. Yes, you always reduce it if it can be reduced. Because the directions will tell you, the directions won't really say that, but it's just assumed now that you know that. Kennedy? Um, no, like for example, the next one I'm doing, 4.175. So there's one, two, three place values. So one, Two, three means it's in the thousandths place value. So I take 175 and put it over a thousand. The number in front of the decimal comes down to in front of the fraction. Okay, this right here, that right there is the thousandths place value. Okay, that's why I put it over a thousand. Now I have to reduce one seventy five over a thousand. I know that I can divide it by what? Five. So five goes into one seventy five. Thirty two times no. No, 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 35 times. 5 goes into 1,000, 40 times, no, 200 times. So, is there a common factor between 35 and 200? 5. So, I can divide it by 5 again. 5 goes into 35, 7 times. 5 goes into 200 40 times, be 4 and 7 fortieths.
And that's your answer. Trinity? Why do you say like four and seven fortieths? Four and seven fortieths? Because any all the place values behind the decimal have THS in them. Because if they didn't, if I just said this is the tens place value, how would I know if it goes on the left or the right side of the decimal? Because over here is ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. So if I didn't do something to differentiate the place values, then I wouldn't know which one was which. So if somebody said, give me 10, then I would go, okay, you want 10 cents, you want $10, because there's no distinction in the in the two words. There has to be, be a distinction in the two words, or you, you don't know which, which place value you have. Okay, I want you to do this one on your own. 6.24. First thing you have to do is identify the place value. So step one, identify the place value of the last digit. Step two, Take the numbers to the left of the or excuse me, to the right, not left. To the right of the decimal. And put them over the place value. Step three, reduce the fraction from step two, if possible. And fourth, any numbers to the left of the decimal place in front of the reduced fraction. Lily, you must reduce it again because you didn't use the greatest common factor. Correct. You reduce it till there's no common factors between the numerator or denominator. Dixon, you have the answer, and just hang on to it. Okay, if you're working on it, continue to work on it. First step one, step one is to identify the place value of the last digit. What place value is the four in? Hundreds. hundreds. So it is the hundreds place value. Step two says take the numbers to the right of the decimal, these, 
and put them over the place value. Step three says to reduce the fraction. The greatest common factor between 24 and 100 is 4. So I divide it by 4 over 4. That goes into that 6 times, goes into that 25 times. Step 4 says any numbers to the left of the decimal place in front of the reduced fraction. And you have 6 and 6 25ths. Instead of reducing it by 2 and then reducing it by 2 again, I just reduced it by 4. And you did it twice, right? You should have done it twice. Because the first time you do 2, you'll get 12 over 50. 12 over 50 still has a common factor of 2. So you got to divide 12 over 50 by 2. So in other words, 24 over 100, and then you divide that by 2 over 2, that's equal to 12 over 50. 12 over 50 I can reduce by 2 over 2, which gives me 6 over 25. That's where we got that. Brandon. Yes, if you divide it out properly, you always get the same answer. I don't know why you're packing up. I hadn't said you're going to leave. I hadn't even given you your homework assignment yet. Your homework assignment is four point seven nineteen through twenty six and thirty one through thirty eight. Due tomorrow, you may go.